Hi everyone, welcome to the Tricens Martial Art Channel. Hope everyone is still healthy and safe. Just a quick update in South Africa here. I think we are having 2,000 new cases of infection every day, so it's actually not looking very good. After nearly three months of lockdown, the infection rate per day actually got high instead of lower. So as the rate is going, no one knows what is actually going to be under control. And the economy and everything is like really becoming pretty bad because you know a lot of business can't operate for almost three months. And now they're allowing some of the you know business to stop operating again, which is only gonna make the infection worse. Um yeah, so overall it's pretty bad here. I hope you know wherever you are the situation is better. Of course I heard that America is pretty bad specifically. Some other countries are probably doing better. So I'm gonna I think when the lockdown reduced by another level, I might like arrange to start shooting video with my partner again because I assume he also kept himself safe and shouldn't be infected. Still, uh, you know, gonna d decide on that. But hopefully, in the near future, I'll be able to start shooting those videos that I promised my, especially my Patreon supporters. Right? Um, yeah, I'm gonna try to get them started again as soon as possible without endangering, you know, my family with the virus thing. Anyway, another thing that I'd like to quickly talk about is that, uh, yeah, so in my past few episodes on the origin of Tai Chi, I know I'm always going to be pissing people off, but the funny thing is instead of pissing off, you know, the Wudang people or the, or the Li family from Tang Village, yeah, actually the people I did end up pissing off are the ones that are doing Chen Star's small friend, right, who trace their lineage back to Chen Xin. Those guys really got their panty in a bunch because I said Chen Xin was not a real practitioner. So I, I just have to quickly address that. Um, so the series of mine, the moment I started, I know I'm going to be pissing a lot of people off, and I'm okay with that, you know. Uh, and before I'm done, I'm going to be pissing off a whole lot of other people. You know, the more I'm going to talk about things, the more people are going to get pissed off. So if you don't like that, then I guess the video is not for you. And, you know, if you like watching the content, but you don't want to get pissed off, then don't watch the episodes that involve your particular style or lineage, you know. But personally, for me, I don't see what the big deal is. Um, you know, in the near future, I'm also going to be doing episodes on my own grandmasters, right, especially the two from Tai Chi. I'm going to do the one from Tongbei as well, but the one from Tai Chi, one is Wu Tunan, one is uh, Shi Ming, both are very controversial characters, and there are quite a few negative things that people do talk about them. And for me, I'm perfectly fine with it. Um, you know, um, unless it seems like so and so defeated my grandmaster at this event or this you know place. If that didn't happen, then of course it didn't happen. But I don't get pissed when people say you know ah you know Wu Tunan can't fight or Wu Tunan's Tai Chi is bad. That doesn't really affect me in any way because I know for a fact that you know what I can do and what I'm cap capable of. You know, whether people down to my grandmaster absolutely does not affect me. Because I know that, you know, if those people face me, meet me face to face in real life, I'll kick their ass. And that's all that is important, right? Um, forcing people to accept that my grandmaster is good is stupid for me. And I think that is a sign of uh, insecurity, right? It's a sign that for people who doesn't actually have real skill, that get insecure about people talking bad things about their grandmaster. So who have real skills, couldn't care less because you know what is that gonna do I have the skills I have I know what I can do I know what I will do to people who you know who I meet in real life I want to taste what my lineage can do that's all there is and that's all that matters right everything else is pointless but unfortunately I guess at least a group of these small friend people they are very uh, insecure about their own lineage that's the impression I get and that's why they you know they first tell me that I don't do my homework I don't do my research and when I actually ask them to provide proof, they don't have proof either. Because you see, Chen Xin was not a, not, was not a known practitioner in the martial community, right? So it becomes a case of he says, she says. There's no real evidence on, you know, who have he beaten? Can he fight? We don't know that, you know, and he didn't have the same, same type of reputation like Yang Luchan or Chen Fa Ke. So there's really nothing that they can provide as proof or the part that I didn't do my research, right? The best thing they can do is show me a learning tree. But I mean, what is that supposed to mean? I know fake master who have learning trees too, you know? No saying Chen Xin is fake, but 
Show me a learning tree of people learning from him doesn't mean that he's a genuine master. And obviously, you know, this whole debate come down to people who profit from his lineage and people who don't. And, and, and again, like I said before, I'm not saying 100% certainty that he was not a practitioner, but I personally believe he was not. Because again, there was lack of reputation, lack of evidence, and furthermore, you know, like I said, I read his book and his book doesn't make sense based on the knowledge I have about internal martial art. And, um, and I think that is more important. And it turns out those guys didn't even read his book. And, you know, they're talking to me about lacking research. And the thing is, obviously some of you are going to disagree with this, but, you know, I've met a lot of internal practitioners from all the major internal styles. And in the end, from my own personal observation, right, I concluded that there are four main fundamental forces that each internal style all possess. And I have people in each of these styles, such as, you know, Chen style, Xing Yi, Tai Ji, Yi Quan, Wu Xing Tong Bei, that they all can concur with my observation, right? This is not something I made up by myself. And, you know, if you don't know what that is, I have a video that explains the four fundamental forces. So what I do is I judge practitioners of internal martial art based on the understanding of the four fundamental forces, whether they have it. So Chen Yi's book doesn't have them all, and the ones he has, he explains them wrong. And of course, I've seen small friend people in real life and on many videos and I haven't and today I have not seen one that possesses the full fundamental forces so therefore by my own personal observation and experience I don't think Chen Xing has it and if he doesn't have it then he's not a real practitioner it's simple as that right but enough about Chen Xing I'm just trying to say is that um, these, these videos are going to piss people off and you know you kind of have to accept it if you want to watch on and I'm perfectly okay with it I don't really care so today's subject is probably going to piss off some other people. Um, we're going to talk about the downfall of the of the Yang family, right, from Yang Lutan. On my first episode in this series, I discussed the rise to the invincible Yang, right? A, a guy coming out of a small county in a you know in, in a in a side small town, he eventually made a name in the capital in the imperial capital of China during Qing Dynasty and became one of the most recognized and most well-established Chinese martial art master in the entire recent Chinese martial art history, right? That's Yang Luchan. He came from almost nothing, I'd like to say. I mean, he has like ancestral home and probably some money initially, but he's almost like he came from nothing, kind of nowhere, and he became like this biggest influential martial artist who taught Prince and, you know, and other important people in the capital. So that's why he's a rise to the Invincible Yang. But as we all know today, Taiji is, is already becoming a laughing stock, right? I mean, in the past, I would say, ever since the Republic era, Taiji has started to decline. It's just got even worse now, especially after Xu Xiaodong defeated that, uh, you know, self-proclaimed Taiji master Wei Wei Lei. And regarding that, right, uh, a lot of these other practitioners of Taiji say, ah, you know, Wei Lei is a fake master, he wasn't a real master, he made up his stock. All those claims are true, right? He is not a real master. He has a lineage tracing to Yang family uh, through Li Mogen, through Li Yaxuan. However, of course, he was not a real master. But what a lot of these Taiji people don't want to ask themselves, or they pretend they don't know or think about it, is that if they go up to the stage again, Xu Xiaodong, would they do any better, right? Yes, Wei Lei was a fake master. He, he sucked, but... Well, if you think you can, then why don't you go and, and fight Xu Xiaodong and win, and then show everybody that Taiji can fight. Right? But nobody does that. They keep saying that, you know, Wei Lei doesn't mean anything, but who means something then? Who can prove Taiji can fight? Currently, as far as I know, no one is able to step, step, step up to Xu Xiaodong, right? So, I think it's kind of pointless to keep, you know, barking on the fact that Wei Lei is not real because they themselves, you know, these people who say that, they will get knocked out in 10 seconds by Xiao Dong as well. And that is the current state of Tai Chi where no one can actually step up using legitimate Tai Chi skill to fight and prove Tai Chi is a viable martial art. And I mean, obviously, it doesn't count when the Chen village, like, you know, Chen Xiaowang and, you know, Wang Zhanjun, Wang Zhanhai, those people, they hire a standard athlete, professional standard athlete, to pretend to be their disciple. I mean, obviously, 
they are officially the disciple now, but these guys were Santa champion before they became disciples of Chen Village, right? So that doesn't count, right? For example, she's Chen Yao Wang's got like Sun Wu and um, Wang Zhanghai has got somebody else, I can't remember his name. And recently he acquired another provincial Santa champion. So having these guys to go up stage and fight Xi Yao Dong like Sanda and then you know, let them say that Chen Martial Art can fight is stupid, right? Okay, so today's topic is not about them, but I'm just saying that no one currently can prove that Tai Chi can fight. And it makes you wonder, right? Uh, you know, Yang Lucheng, he came from mid to late Qing Dynasty, right? He died like in the, I think he died in the 19th, uh, in the 1870s, or the 1870s, right? So it's not that far away from now. But somehow, you know, Tai Chi went from one of the best martial arts in China, one of the best at least, right? Not the best, but one of the, the top fighting martial arts in China to completely useless. And it makes you wonder why. So that's today's topic. We're going to tackle on the downfall of the Yang family, right? After the rise, there's a downfall. So there's a saying in Chinese uh, culture, it's called Fu Bu Guo San Dai. What that means is family wealth doesn't last more than three generations. Of course, that's not always true, especially in the West, right? There are a lot of these old money, uh, rich families that have been rich for, for, you know, for hundreds of years and many generations. But in China, this tends to be true. Like, you know, people can never keep their family wealth for a very long period of time through many generations. And the same is true for Chinese martial arts, funny enough. There's no... I can't think of any Chinese martial art family that has been like, you know, at the top of the game for more than three generations. And the Yang family is no different, right? So we're going to briefly go through some of the things that, you know, we already know that you might not know just to make sure everyone's on the same page. And do keep in mind that, like I said in my first episode already, Chinese martial art was not a big deal in terms of social power. So there are no historians that write these things down. So a lot of this, this stuff we can only gather from people's account and people's rumors. There are no physical historical document, right? When I was looking into the Yang family, there's something called the Yongnian County Taiji document. But when we actually look into it, that document was not written in their time. It's written, it's compiled by people afterwards based on stuff that they heard from others, right? So there's never an official record. So everything we, do, we discuss are mostly going to be essentially hearsay, but we're going to try to logically analyze, you know, put them into analysis and see which of them are more likely to be true and which are not. So just keep in mind that none of these things can be proven or disproven, most of them. So we know that Yang Luchan has three sons. Right? There is a, the first, his elder son is called Yang Fenghou. And contrary to some of the people's claim, there is no info on him at all. There is not, not a date of birth, there is not a date of death, there is not nothing on him. So there's a lot of rumors about you know, him maybe was killed in a duel against another monster. That's considered a, you know, a bad reputation, that's why they keep it quiet. Frankly, I don't believe that's true because... The Yang family had a lot of influence in, in China, right? Especially in Beijing, in the imperial city. So if somebody killed their son, they are going to revenge. But they didn't. So I don't think their son was killed in, in the deal. And obviously, if someone who actually killed their son, that's like quite a big reputation, right? Why would you do that and keep a secret? You want to capitalize on that. And none of that happened either. Another theory is that, you know, he died from sickness. That's highly possible in those days. If you get some bad sickness that's no, no cure for, uh, you are going to die. So that's likely to happen. Another is that he was hooked on opium. Not too sure about that because when he was around, opium wasn't that of a big deal yet. It wasn't to the power where, you know, opium was really bad eventually led to opium war. And also, opium doesn't kill you right away like, you know, some of the serious drugs now. So I don't think he died to opium. Well, if he was a dead to opium, he would die at, at such a young age, right? So, so yeah, so we, so we don't know. What, what, what we do know is that he never went to the imperial city. Um, there's no record of him going to the imperial city with his father. So he must have died before Yang Wenchan really hit it big. So exactly how 
no one knows, right? And I don't think it's that important. So just I'm just mentioning this so you know that any you know claims on how he died, there's no support, right? It's just pure speculation. He had two surviving sons. The second son, Yang Banhou, and then the third son, Yang Jianhou. Now this is a very interesting scenario. Right, Yang Banhou is quite famous for his short temper and his willingness to fight. So his Yang Lucha's nickname was the Invincible Yang, or in my version of translation, I prefer the Undefeated Yang, right? In Chinese, you call it Yang Wu Di. Wu Di means undefeated. His second son, Yang Banhou, has the nickname of Chu Shou Jian Hong. What that means is it literally translates to lifting his hand and you will see red. But what that you know really means is that when he fights people, people get hurt. Right? He doesn't hold back. For example, uh, Yang Lu Chan is famous for sending people far away or up onto the wall and the guy will hit the wall and fall down, but not get hurt, right? It is a displacement force. In Tai Chi, or in all internal martial arts, there are two types of forces. There's a displacement force and there's what we call break force. In Chinese, we call it Duan Jin. Duan means to break. So the break force doesn't mean you break his bones or you break something, you break something away. It just means the force breaks off, right? Displacement force, it continue, it continues. So the, a person that gets hit by it flies backward. It, it gets displaced back. A break force hits somebody, the force breaks off and it, it affects only the area that it hit or like right into the, the muscle mass, right? That's how you injure somebody's uh, organs, so to speak. So Yang Ban Ho very favors break force, and whenever he hit people, they get hurt, right? And that's why he got the name of Chu Shou Jian Hong, and he's famously bad tempered, and he hurt people a lot, to a point where everyone was kind of scared of him, and they don't want to challenge the Yang family in anything, because when they do, Yang Ban Ho goes and beats them up. And I don't mean like he's a bully, he just, he's a very short tempered, passionate martial artist, and he's always willing to fight people. So therefore, after Yang Lu Chan established the family, Yang Ban Ho is the one who actually was responsible to keeping their fame by beating up everyone who, who doubted their power or their, their ability, right? Not power, doubted their ability. And Yang Ban Ho is so bad tempered that it was recorded that um, obviously not in official history, but it's well known that there was once where Yang Lu Chan went away to his hometown in, in Yongyang County for some family affair, we don't know exactly what. So he led his disciples to Yang Ban Ho. And after a little while, this, you know, the disciples wrote letters to Yang Lu Chan and saying that, you know, we can't handle Yang Ban Ho, please can't come back. But Yang Ban Ho is very harsh on the training, which from what I can gather, is probably how his father trained him. And he's saying, you know, my father trained me this way, I'm going to train everybody else this way. What he doesn't understand is that uh, Yang Luchan is, you know, he went to Beijing at the age of 48. And when you're at 48, you kind of understand how society works, right? Yang Banho became quite skilled at a relatively younger age. And he have not gone through the social experience of society. And, you know, he didn't have, he hasn't had doors shut in his face. And thanks to his father, everybody, you know, kind of respect him and, and don't challenge him on matters, so he never, you can almost say he's a little bit spoiled in terms of understanding social dynamic. So he had to understand that, you know, his father had to pull a lot of strings and work really hard and, you know, and kiss and, and suck up to important people like the prince and etc. to get the family to where they are, right? And those disciples that his father has are all like rich and important people, right? They're not just commoners. So, so yes, you have to teach them the genuine skill, but Yang Ruchan will go about teaching them more skillfully, whereas Yang Ban Ho just, you know, harshly teach them the way his father taught him. And obviously his father will teach him much harsher because it's that his son, right? That's how it, how it is in Chinese custom. You know, when you teach your own family, you, you, you don't sugarcoat it. You, you get quite harsh and, you, you know, you force them to progress. But when you teach teaching people for money, it's a different story. You kind of have to take their personal feelings into consideration. You can't be too harsh and you can't be too slacking, right? It's actually quite an art on, on its own. So Yang Ban Ho does not understand that and he teaches those people the same way he, his father taught him and they can't handle it. And so that's why eventually 
Yang Banho left Beijing and went back to Yong Yongyang County. They, they don't, there's no official statement to why he does that, but the most likely cases is that he couldn't get any disciples in Beijing. The people are kind of scared of him and don't like his teaching method. And because he has a lot of pride, right? When you become one of the top hands in Beijing at a young age, you tend to have a lot of pride. So for him, it's like, you know, you don't want to learn from me, fine. I don't think you deserve me to teach you either. You know, with my, my teaching, my time. So that's why eventually he left uh, Beijing and then he settled back in Yongyang County. Very little is known about him once he went back. Um, so we don't actually know what happened to him. Eventually he passed away in Yongyang County and nothing major happened to him after that. Um, there are right people not in Yongyang County who claim that they practice Banhou Jia, which means the Yang Banhou version of Tai Chi. Now, I don't doubt when he goes back that he will maybe try to teach people, right? Because that's the only thing he, he knows. So I do believe he tried to teach people. However, this Ban Hou Jia that we find now in Yunyang County, I personally don't believe that is real. Uh, because there are two major examples, right? Uh, there's one that the guy is doing Tai Chi, the regular form, but every time he goes to somewhere, he does a chain style power generation, like he shakes. I think that guy just took the, the Tai Chi form, maybe from Yang Banho lineage, maybe not. Maybe he learned from a book, we don't know. And then he added the chain style power because in the stories it says Yang Banho is famous for hitting people with break force. And he doesn't understand what break force is in the Yang family. And that's why he added the Chen family stuff because you know there's a whole rumor that Yang Lu Chan made Chen martial art easier to learn for the royalties, which I personally believe is completely bogus, okay? Um, the, 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 the prince and then the other royalty, like uh, the associate, there was, like, there was like a general guy, and then there was also Wu, Wu Quanyou, who worked in the one of the eight flag posts, right? The, one of the, the Manchurian military stations. All of them are martial governing, uh, you know, martial government people. They are not academic. So it, it was not, it's not like Yang Luchan was teaching a bunch of old, spoiled, uh, aristocracy, right? He's actually teaching martial people, so I don't believe he made the martial art easier by taking away the power generation. You know, it's just that he has a different method to generate power, right? If you look at uh, in terms of Xing Yi, there's Ming, An, Hua, right? Visible, hidden, and dissolved. So the higher you go, the less obvious that power generation is. So I don't believe Yang Banho, the Yang star was, you know, was shaking hard power. That doesn't make sense. So for me, those who does that and claim it's Yang Banho's Tai Chi, I think they're just talking trash. Another one, I saw a guy who does a completely different form, is very low and looks nothing like the, the Yang Masha we know today. I personally don't believe that is genuine either because each person has their own flavor to the martial art, but I don't think Yang Banho has entirely different form that completely different from everyone else. Sure, when Yang Chan did his form to Yang Banho, to Yang Jianho, even to, to the third generation, the form would change and vary, but it, it will not become a completely different form, right? And we can see by even the move list. If we see Yang, Yang Lu Chan's move list, we, we don't know, but we can see it from Wu Yuxiang, right? Because they still shit note back then. And we can see it from Li Yu's move list, the, the sequence list. We can compare that to Yang Jianhou, to Yang Chengfu. We can see there are very minor alteration and changes. It's not like there's a completely different form. So I don't believe the one who does a completely different form and says Yang Banhou's uh, Tai Chi are real either. And furthermore, um, in my own Wu Xing Tongbei lineage, right, our great grandmaster Zhang Ce, he was sent to the Yang family and studied under Yang Banhou and Yang Jianhou. And our line, basically when Zhang Ce came out, he did not teach Tai Chi openly, he taught Wu Xing Tongbei. But in his lineage, like the, some of the disciples learned Tai Chi from him as well, we just don't advertise it. So we have an unbroken line on the side, away from public, that like it was never openly taught, it was only taught to, the, to a few the disciples. And if I look at that version of Tai Chi, which came from Yang Banhuang, Yang Jianhou, it does not look huge difference from what Tai Chi, from the sequencing, in terms of sequence, it's not very different from what Tai Chi is by Yang Chengfu's time, right? Um, the details that are different, the body posturings and stuff that are different, but the sequencing is more or less the same. So 
I do not think there's a secret version of Taiji that was lost, you know, with Yang Banhou. All we do know is that Yang Banhou was a very, very skilled fighter, right? That part we do know for certain. And he was largely responsible for maintaining his father's reputation as one of the best fighters in the imperial city at the time. Now the third son, Yang Jianhou, is the most famous one because he's the one that continued his father's legacy and taught all the people in power, right? He still taught one of the princes afterwards, as well as his butler and then, or steward or butler. And then he taught one of other rich people that extend all the way to the early days of the Re Republic era, right? Some of the most powerful people such as Xu Yusheng was his disciple. Um, so he sort of continued his father's legacy in terms of the family business, right? Yang Banghou was basically deemed unfit to, to carry on the family business because he's just so bad-tempered. But, you know, Yang, Yang Jianhou is supposed to be a very calm and mild person, right? He doesn't actually like to fight. We don't know how good he is at fighting. I will presume at least he will know how to fight because um, he does have a close relationship with Yang Banghou, so, they, so I'm sure Yang Banghou would like, you know, tell him his experiences in fighting. And of course, he must have gotten a lesson from his dad on the experience of fighting. But he hasn't actually fought, so his actual ability on fighting is actually unknown. And that's not because you know he was scared or he didn't want to fight, it's because everyone who needed to be fought and beat up is done by his elder brother already. So when he came you know, to acquire the family skill and start teaching, there was nobody left to fight, right? Everyone had already been beaten up by, by Yang Banhou. So he didn't have, have a chance to prove his own fighting ability. So it doesn't mean he can't fight, but we don't have any evidence of him fighting. However, there are a lot of accounts of uh, people who just push hand with him that say that his skill is superb. So we do know that he has a correct understanding to Taiji sensitivity, power generation, all of that. So he definitely have real skill, right? We don't know how good he is compared to his dad, but he's definitely up there. He's not bad, right? He really trained hard. There's another well-known myth. Now, again, we don't have any evidence for this, but there is a well-known rumor or myth that he actually tried to commit suicide during training. So Yang Banghou, bad-tempered, and he likes to fight. So for him, he had a very strong motivation to fight. He always wanted to fight people, and therefore he has strong motivation to train, right? I mean, if you put like four hours, six hours of hard training every day, you, you just have a motivation. What are you doing it for? And for him, it's because he likes to fight. That's quite simple, a, a motivation. But Yang Jianhou does not like fighting, so he actually doesn't have the same kind of motivation for training. But his father was drilling him really, really hard. So at some point, he actually tried to, to take his own life, and you know, the attempt failed. I don't know how they resolved it, if it really did happen. Like I said, we can't verify it anymore. But it is one of the well-known stories among Beijing martial arts circle that Yang Jianhou once tried to kill himself. I don't know how they eventually resolved the issue, but he perseveres through training and become one of the most successful Taiji masters of his generation. And he's basically responsible for spreading Chinese martial art or for spreading Yang style Taiji to a wider audience. Right? His father taught more like a top-end clientele. He has a few that are really high-end, uh, you know, powerful, rich, royalty kind of people. Whereas you know, Yang Jianhou started teaching a wider audience. I mean, they're still wealthy, right? He didn't, I don't, as far as I know, he didn't really, really teach a lot of poor people, cause, not because he didn't like poor people, but back in the days, if you're poor, you gotta go to work. You don't have time to come to training and then go home and train and pay a school fee, right? It doesn't work like that. So the people who have time are generally well, wealthy enough to not having to do a full day job. So there's at least that. So, we do know that so he spread so so his father was only teaching royalty and extension to like government people, whereas he started teaching wealthier commoners, shall we call, call them. And so that's when young family martial art really picked up a wider audience, right? A wider clientele or, or disciples. Right, and then we don't actually know if Yang Banhou has kids. Um if they had, they were not in Beijing and they were in Yongnian County. There's very little info to know about them. I can't find anything. But Yang Jianhou has 
three kids, right? Has three sons, just like his father. You know, quite quite funny, interestingly enough. And that's what we know of the young family's third generation. His elder son again, I think, died at an early age, and very little is known about him. You know, it's almost like a weird, uh, you know, like a recurring theme. Because his second son, Yang Shaohou, right? We didn't write it here. Let's see if my if this is still working. Yang Shaohou. I hope you guys can see that. So that his second son, his second son initially is not called Yang Shaohou, right? Instead, he's called Yang. Zhao That's what he's given them, Yang Zhao Xiong. Okay. But we know him by Yang Shao Hou, so we're gonna you know just call him Yang Shao Hou for the for the time being. So that's his second song. His second song is actually takes off his uncle, Yang Ban Hou. He's got short temper, he likes to train and he likes to fight. In fact, he actually went to learn from Yang Ban Hou more than he learned from his dad, right? Not saying he didn't learn from his dad at all, but he learned Oh, he, but besides learning from his dad, he also learned from Yang Banhou, and he has a very similar personality to Yang Banhou. So he went around and kicked a lot of asses as well. Ever since uh, he went, you know, I think around the age of twenty something, he went out and started kicking asses, and then um, ever since then he just kicked a lot of asses. And again, people were kind of scared of him. He had the same temper. He also can't keep students because he um, he's very harsh to, to them, just like the way. Yang Banhou toward, toward him, right? If you if you ask him how to do this power, he will demonstrate it on you and send you to a war, not hurting you, of course, but you still, you know, either hit a war or you will fall on the ground. And it's it starts to get unpleasant for people who don't actually have the strong desire to fight to learn in that kind of manner, right? Uh, do you hear do you Yang Yang Shaohou starts start teaching in the Republic era, and that's when people became softer. They're no longer there to learn this so they can you know, protect their life or fight someone or become armed escort where if you saw you're gonna get killed, right? So that's not the need anymore. So they don't really enjoy being hit during class and being sent flying and and every time you ask him something he demonstrated on you. They don't like that. So Yang Shaohou couldn't actually keep student. And therefore he ha he has no non disciple. I know in today's world there are people who claim to have Tai Chi taught by Yang Shaohou. But there are no known disciples. So, so it is possible that he taught some people, but he has no disciple. Anyone who claimed that they are, you know, they must or their grandmas is a disciple of Yang Shaohou, I will call BS on that. Well, for those of you who don't know the Chinese custom, when any master, especially well known ones, right, even though Yang Shaohou is antisocial and people don't like him, he's still well recognized because of his ability and his family fame. So for, for people, especially people like that, when they take a disciple, they have to hold a ceremony called a Bai Shi Yi Shi, right? And they have to invite people that they know, people that the family or friend was martial artist, like the, you know, the martial people that the young family are, are associated with, they have to invite them to be witnesses, okay? And then they have to let the student, like, let the disciple write a piece of paper, like a, like a scroll. That detail, you know, his name, where he's from, when was he born, when did he meet his master, why would he want to join as a disciple? There's a whole thing, whole paragraph he had to write, and then he had to read it aloud in front of these witnesses, and then hand it to to the master, and you had to have two copies. So the master keeps one copy, the disciple keeps another. This is so that no one in the future can dispute and say that you are not his disciple, and the fact that nobody can provide this kind of evidence would mean that none of them, none of the people who claim today are actually have, you know, traced to a disciple of Yang Shaohou. And there's no known record of him taking a disciple either among the martial community. If he invited, if he had a ceremony, he would have invited these important martial art figures, and therefore people would know that he took a disciple, but nobody does. So I don't believe any of the claims are real. And for example, uh, Wu Tuna, my... My, my one of my Taiji grandmaster, he also claimed to have learned from Yang Shaohou, and later on in his life, he started doing this Yang Shaohou small frame form. I'm gonna talk about that more in an episode specifically for Wu Tunan, 
But I just pointed out that even his claim, I have personal doubt about it. Despite him being my grandmaster, I don't think he really does a, a Yang Shaohou frame of Tai Chi. Anyway, more on that in a later episode. So essentially, he's good at fighting, but he had no student. Alright, thanks for watching part 1 of the Downfall of Young Family, Fact or Fiction, Episode 3, Part 1. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe to my channel, and you know, if you can, please support me on Patreon, that will help me greatly. And I'll see you in a short bit on Part 2.